My name's Fabian and I am an exotics vet in Birmingham and this is going to be a little video about what I do on a kind of day-to-day -day basis. So we are in the um, exotics ward in my practice and today we have two very, 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 very special normal characters that we see quite a few a lot of the time. So we've got a Herman's tortoise here. Yeah. Now as you can see, can you see that? The eye is completely closed. So I'm going to be trying to rehydrate this one and open those eyes. Because quite often, ow, 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 ow. Quite often, um, these guys will have dehydration and their eyes will close. So then you open it, rehydrate them, job's good. But it may have some other problems behind those closed uh, eyelids there. And then, let's take my surgical cap, because I'm about to do the surgery. I've got a bearded dragon. And this bearded dragon, can you see that? Um, this bearded dragon has impaction, we think, because it's on an inappropriate substrate. It has stopped eating. But, yes. Let's just get a better view. Whoop. So this is part of my normal day some of the cool weird and wonderful characters that i do see here is an x-ray so i'll zoom out for you can you see that so what we're looking for is here we have the lungs and here we have a buildup of some type of material so a lot of, a lot of times what we see is when they have poor substrate or they've not been well hydrated is that they have these big impactions somewhere where the stomach is, which is about here. And the intestine is going So yeah, it looks like we've got a buildup of fluid and maybe a little bit of gunk here. We could do a blood test, but one thing in exotics is money is always an issue. Um, and so um, they've opted for an enema. And so I'll try and show you guys me sticking a tube up a bit of dragon's bum very soon. But it's not always the really, really good, cool things that we do. Um, sometimes we have to do the boring stuff. So I've got Red Bull. I've got an empty pack of Colin Caterpillars from Oxford Spaces. Um, some notes to wind up for a cruciate um, uh, surgery I did today. The two cruciate fixations on a dog. A work phone. And a computer. So... Um, as we do small animals and exotics here as well, um, we, have a, we have a mix of things that uh, we need to do. Give you an idea of the type of things that I see on a regular basis. Um, my consult list of the day started with a cat, dog, tortoise, dog, leopard gecko, cat, seven puppy vaccinations, um, a conure, bird, a chicken, um, a, a monitor lizard, a macaw, a duck, another macaw, a rabbit, a cat, a dog, and a Amazon parrot. So as you can see, um, my caseload is very varied. A typical day or back sample we've got two corn snakes in the pulled sample here usually we ask them to be um you know individual but you know in this particular case this person's only been able to collect them we've got three baby bearded dragons um a veiled chameleon some legless lizards a gecko i assume a leopard gecko a bosque monitor um a raccoon and a Lizard. One of the things I also do a lot of um, is be a backup clinical pathologist. So blood smears are something that we do in small animal practice quite a lot. But I would probably say in the exotics field, you do it even more. Um, and that's because a lot of people don't have the money to send off um, certain things. So doing it in-house is really great. Again, it applies to uh, small animal stuff as well. Um, the kind of main things we're looking for is, you know, toxic granulation um, and internal parasites, blood parasites. Next part of the job, something I do often, and 
turn your eyes away if you don't like gr gruesome things is post-mortems. Now, post-mortems really should be done in a fumigation uh, uh, chamber so we're able to um, protect ourselves, but I take extra precautions. Um, every time I get a new bird in, um, especially which I don't know, usually if they have um, respiratory problems, is I bathe them in a hippie scrub mix. Um, and the reason why I do that is to stop things like spores from chlamydiosis, um, or aspergillosis, which is less of a problem, but psittacosis can be quite dangerous. It can actually give you coronavirus-like signs. So I'm gonna give this one a bit of a bath now and then have a look um, and it's pretty much as similar as, as any other post-mortem. After a long day of dealing with other people's animals, I like to come and spend some time with my own. So this is Brutus, the bearded dragon, and I've got Minerva, Mini for short, here. And um, I just wanted to show you guys that exotics care is should be really a passion, like anything in practical medicine but particularly exotics care because there's so much that you need to know and sometimes the best way to learn as you'll be fully aware is is by just applying it and, and having a passion for it and enjoying what you do and um, having both of these characters with me at home is is, is one of the, the, the best parts of my day and um, so whatever you do go into be it exotics, small animals, equine, large animals, whatever, mixed practice is, is to, to, to remind yourself why you got into it into the first place. And that's because um, you have a passion for it and, you know, you want to provide the best welfare that you can for these guys. So, yeah. Okay. I um, hope that helps. If anyone wants um, to reach out to me, um, everything I do is under at, at Dready Vet, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And um, I'll hopefully be able to help some of you guys. Okay. See you later.